Please stand near. Hey boss, welcome back and congratulations. I'd heard you'd finally stop shrinking. So I guess this is how small you're going to be forever now. Sorry, it's so hard to get down to your level in these heels. I feel like I should lay on my tummy and we could be about eye level. But that'd be kind of intimidating, I bet. Can I pick you up instead? Walking down the hall yourself would probably take you a whole hour. Oh, well, um, there's been some changes around here during your sick leave. So much of upper management got the shrinking sickness that we kind of had to improvise. And we decided that it didn't make sense to leave all the corner offices empty for months and months. We honestly didn't know if or when you'd ever be coming back, so I guess now it's my office? But you can still use it. There's plenty of space for both of us. And as your secretary, you'll need me close by anyway. It's not like you can type or use a phone, so I'll stay right by your side. You can have a little spot on the top of my desk. I promise I'll be careful. I'll hold you in both hands. Is that okay? I missed you. Things were really hard without you. I thought about calling you almost every day, but I figured you had a lot on your mind already. Those nurses doning over you in the hospital were pretty cute though, weren't they? Last I saw you, you were two feet tall. It looked like they enjoyed doting over you, getting to pick you up and carrying you places. I can see why now. There's something nice about feeling your little hands touch my skin. Your adorable little business clothes. How did you find them? There must be quite a shortage of doll size clothing these days. Here we are. I got you a little mat to sit on. Although, I guess it's more like a futon for you at your current size. Good thing I didn't order your office furniture before you were officially done shrinking. I was eyeing a tiny desk for you, but there might be a bit of a wait. Supplies are, um, <laughs> short. Do you think you'll be able to get comfy until then? Good. Now, the government issued some guidelines for reorienting employees when their shrinking sickness goes into remission. We're required to make any accommodations we can for your disability. But the situation's so new, I don't think anybody has any idea of what will actually be helpful. There's a survey you're supposed to fill out online, but... You can't really type, can you? <laughs> You'd give pretty short answers if you had to press each key individually. Maybe I could, like, break a chopstick in half and you could use that to hunt and pack? But with a mechanical keyboard, I don't know if you'd be strong enough to register a key press. Lucky for you, you're not alone. I'd be happy to fill out the survey for you as part of my secretary duties. How's that sound? Now, just so you know, some of these questions are quite personal. I promise nothing will leave this room. I never want to embarrass you about your condition. You deserve better than that. I'm just here to help, like always. All right, let me get set up here. So the first pair of questions are about your physical measurements. How tall were you before you got sick? Mm-hmm, that sounds about right, but I always wondered. I remember looking up to you. Not that I can't still look up to you, metaphorically, but I guess I'd still be towering over you if you hadn't gotten sick. Uh-huh, I had a little growth spurt. You know how it is. Some people shrank, some people grew. Janet's still on leave. She can't fit in the elevator. I think they'll have to build her a new house as soon as she stabilizes. How tall are you now? Don't worry, I can convert units. Hold on. Huh. That's quite interesting. <laughs> You're exactly one-eighth of your previous height. And how much did you weigh? You don't have to be exact. Just your best guess. And what are you down to? Mm-hmm, that square cube rule. I could throw you like a softball. Uh, not that I ever would, but that is one way to lose weight. 
How's your appetite? Good. I hear some people struggle with that. Tiny's just waste away. They don't want to eat. That makes sense. It must be hard to chew with the jaw that small. Lots of oatmeal and applesauce for you then. Well, not lots. I'm sure a spoonful is a gracious plenty for you now. How's your temperature? The survey wants to know if you have any difficulty regulating your body heat. Off is set to a little more chilly than usual. I hope that's not bothering you. It's so easy for bigger people to get overheated. We've already toned down the dress code. Things might get interesting if we had to wear even less clothes. Oh, you poor thing. Let me fix that for you. I have this cloth here. I usually use it to clean my glasses, but it's very soft. And a pack of tissues too. Lay down, little one. I'll get you nice and tucked in. You can use the cloth as a blanket, and this can be your pillow. Not bad for a makeshift bed, right? Mm-hmm. You look like a little burrito, nice and neat wrapped up like that. Actually, I'd better be careful. I might mistake you for one that I keep at the side of my desk. The blanket isn't too snug around you, is it? I couldn't help tucking you in. You just look so darn cute. Now, how would you describe changes in your social life? Uh-huh. Very interesting. What do you mean by that? That must have been on your mind for a little while. Mm hmm Do you find that infantilizing or comforting? There's a checkbox for each one, so you can select both if you want. Well, that's good to hear that's not all bad. I'd feel sad if you didn't like big people taking care of you. <laughs> Because I want to take care of you, Sully. It's my job. Always has been. And if you need me to do more, then I just need to grow with the job. <laughs> well, maybe I already did. Now, how about your sleep schedule? That's pretty normal. For some reason, Tiny's just can't seem to stay awake for more than five or six hours at a time. Do you sleep well? How about dreams? Would you say these are good dreams or bad dreams? There's a spot for me to make notes about them. Do you want to describe one? Mm hmm Huh? That sounds so peaceful. I often try to meditate and think about nice things before bed. Like a nice big grassy field, little cows in the distance, the green hills shifting with the wind. I like to imagine I'm part of the landscape, like the rocks or, or the mountains. But... I never remember my dreams. I wish I could. Maybe I could dream about that meadow instead of just visualizing it. But I'll just put that you're not having trouble sleeping. Have you had any trouble concentrating or remembering? Good. It's going to be nice having you back even if you do need to take a midday nap. What sort of challenges have you been facing lately? Oh, that's terrible. Is there anything I can do to help? Okay, that's not part of the survey, but I'm still getting some good notes. The whole point of this is helping you get what you need. 
And if you can write down your experiences, then maybe the shrinking sickness won't be so scary for people who are newly infected. I'm sure you'd have liked to have known that not everything was going to change, and that people would support you, no matter what. Of course, boss. I'd support you no matter what. Your worth as a person isn't based on what you can do for other people. It has to do with giving your best every day, no matter what your best looks like. There's nothing to measure up against because your best is going to be different every day. And I've always admired how giving you are, how kind and thoughtful. That's why you're the boss, and we never dream of replacing you. You'll always belong here. <laughs> of course I'm smart. You hired me after all. <laughs>